This is Umar Ahmed for IFL TV in association with MTK Global. I'm at Eubanks Gym in Brighton. I've been joined by his main sparring partner for this camp. Dennis, good to have you on the channel firstly. How Thank are you doing? Man, good to be here, good to be here. Yeah, um, a lot to talk about to you obviously. Uh, firstly, how's Chris been in preparation for the, the Gale fight? Um, he's been a workhorse, man. Working hard, training hard, super dedicated. Um, no girls since I've been here anyway. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's been good. Um, yeah, you're a natural super middleweight. Um, I honestly say I'm a middleweight as well. I'm, I'm a okay. small super middleweight, so but I make it comfortable. I feel good at this weight. So similar boat to Chris. Obviously, exactly. he's a natural middleweight exactly. as well. Yeah. But fighting at super middle. Yes. Do you think that could play a role in the fight though, with Degel being a natural super middle? No, because I don't really see Degel as a big puncher. So um, I think with fights. With, with big guys that are coming down from 200 or that type of weight class, like you got your David Benavidez and Cullum mm -hmm. Smiths, yeah. Gilberto, if he doesn't move up, those kind of guys, I think that size makes a difference. But James Ago is either he's either a small super middleweight or he's chunky. So I don't see him as a big puncher. Chunky's been in a lot of wars, been in a lot of wars, had a lot of tough fights. Um, do you think that again is going to play a role in this fight? Yeah, I definitely, I definitely think his experience makes a difference. Um, he's he's done everything to do in boxing as far as going to the Olympics, becoming a world champion. So you can't take that type of experience for granted. I think James is a great fighter. So I definitely think that will make a difference, but not the weight. Okay, okay. How's your time been here, anyways, with Chris? Besides the boxing, how's it been living with him? I mean, it's it's cool. Chris, Chris is a superstar out here. So everywhere we go, people stopping him. I've just been trying to milk it. Like, so whenever people stop him, I'll be like, I mean, you know, I'm beating him up, so you should talk to me too. So <laughs> <laughs> it's been cool. I, I'm really enjoying myself. Mm. Weather's good today, but has it been for the last no, couple of weeks, no, has it? weather's <laughs> been miserable. But in Brighton's defense, the weather's terrible back where I live too, so it's just bad everywhere. Vegas, where are you from originally? Vegas, I, I live yeah? in Vegas, so in Vegas, I look at the weather every day. It's been, it's been about the same, so... You miss in Vegas at all? I miss my daughter in Vegas. I have a, a two-year-old. Um, I've been away from her for a long time, so I can't wait to see her. Mm -hmm. But as far as, other than that, I'm good out here, just training. I love being in the gym, being able to just relax, focus on boxing. It's been cool. Of course, it's the first time Chris has had a full-time trainer for a fight. He's always had Ronnie Davis uh, beside him in the corner. How's that setup been, having a full-time trainer and Ronnie? In the gym. Um, I mean, in the gym has been great. I think I think we're gonna see a difference when the fight comes because he has somebody helping him strategize and game plan and work on his little faults. But um, again, we'll we'll see what happens in the fight after he gets hit. It, it looks great in the gym, but we'll see if Chris is able to respect directions and make the adjustments that his coach is telling him to do when they're actually fighting. You know what I'm saying like that's when we'll really be able to tell if it made a difference. Ronnie Davis has gone on record saying that. Even though Chris now got full-time trainer, he's not sure in between rounds whether Chris will listen to him. What do you think the case will be on the night? Yeah, again, I, because you have somebody who's been their whole boxing career without a coach, it's hard to tell under the lights if they're gonna listen. So I agree. I agree around with that. Like, we'll see. Everyone, everyone's still waiting to see next week if Chris will listen and make the adjustments. I mean, like I said, you want somebody out there that's very intelligent. I think Nate is an intelligent trainer from what I've heard him say, like dealing with him with Chris, listening to him. But um, again, Chris is his own man. We'll see if he listens come fight night. How long have you known Nate Vasquez for? Um, I mean, I've known him in the gym for a couple of years now, but um, we don't really know. We, we've never really dealt with each other like, as far as on a friendship level. I've sparred a couple of his other fighters over there. Um, and that's pretty much it. But he's a, I like him as a coach. I think he's really, really good. And in terms of yourself, obviously coming to England, sparring Chris for so long, must be untold benefits for you doing this. Yeah, definitely. Um, just in, in, in more ways than just the sparring. Like the sparring has been great because it's tough for me to, it's tough for me to get sparring in Vegas because I'm beating everybody up. But um, <laughs> <laughs> but um, so so it's been it's been great to get the rounds in, but also just to be in the camp and watch. The progression of six weeks and how somebody gets ready for a 12 week, I mean 12 round fight. So that's been good. Just the knowledge I've been able to soak in. And then being around Ronnie, listening to his advice, and being around somebody that's been around boxing longer than I've been alive. So that's been great. Chris Eubank Sr. has always been sort of in the forefront of things uh, in previous fights of juniors. What's happened there? Is he just busy or? Um, to be honest with you, that's something you'd have to ask Chris. Um, I have seen Sr. around and um. He has great advice whenever he is here, but um, I think it was just Chris Jr. trying to 
separate himself a little bit and really be his own man. I think that's more what it was. I don't think it's not, I don't think it's anything to do with Chris Sr. being too busy or them having any type of problems. I think it was more just Chris trying to make a statement mm. that he's, he's able to do this, become a champion by himself. Mm. So I respect that. Couple of more things. Any sort of updates in, on your career? What's happening with you? Um, no, I, I took some off motor on a constant basis though, and they're looking for a fight for me. She said sometime March or April. So I mean, I'm in tip top shape right now. Like I said, doing camp for him. Um, I'm willing to fight anybody at 168. I want the, all the top fights. Um, calling out everybody. So <laughs> and I and I put this challenge out there. I said the next time I lose a fight, I'm retiring from boxing. So I've heard people tell me that I'm not good or whatever, which I am. But if you think I'm not good, then fight me, beat me. Get rid of me. I'm, but my next time I'm losing, I'm retiring. So, like I said, anybody in the top, that means David Benavidez, oh, Jesse yeah? Hart, whoever, um, Chris Eubanks Jr. after this fight, <laughs> James, D like whoever. I want to fight anybody. Cullum Smith? Cullum, I would love to fight Cullum. I mean, I take, I'm not trying to disrespect anybody because I think all these fighters are great fighters. But this is what we're here for. We're here to, to challenge ourselves, push ourselves, see, see really who, who's good, who's not. So, I'd rather fight a top guy and lose than fight a bum and win. I'm saying, like, I rather really, I really want to see what I'm made of. I personally think that I'm one of the best fighters. I just never committed to tra the training process and dedication, but I am now. So fight me. If you beat me, I'm done. <laughs> That's it. Just the last one, Dennis. Uh, we're very close now to fight night at the O2. Quick prediction from yourself. I'm gonna go with Chris by decision. Um, I think, like I said, he's gonna have to. He's definitely gonna have to make some adjustments throughout the, through the course of the fight because um, James is a very intelligent fighter. As long as having, as well as having Paulie in this corner, who's a very mm. intelligent fighter as well, and I have nothing but respect for Paulie. So I think that was a good um, addition to his camp. So Chris is gonna have to make constant adjustments, but I see him pulling it off if he listens and does what I've seen him do in camp. All right, man. Thank you very much for talking IFL TV. Actually, I've got a burning last question. Okay. Have you had fish and chips down here in Brighton? I have had fish and chips on the boardwalk. It was great. I, I, felt, I felt fat. I had to work it off, but it was good. <laughs> do you get that back in America? So? We do, but I mean, it's not as big as it is here. Like, I saw here, here, fish and chips was the thing. So <laughs> I definitely had some. It was good. All right. Well, thank you for your little insight there. And uh, I'm sure we'll catch up in fight week. Thank you, man. Cheers, man.